This is the second video on state space models looking at origins, that is, where do state space models come from. So this resource focuses on state space model equivalents for systems described by ordinary differential equations, but actually you could say we're looking at first principles models for the cases here. If you want a slightly slower explanation of the original modelling, then please look at the separate resources on modelling. Now a state space model is defined in terms of the derivatives of the states. So the argument is that if you know the derivatives of all the states, then you can capture the system behaviour. Now the states relate to dynamic variables such as displacement, height, tension, temperature and so forth. The first step in forming a state space model is to define the states. So what are you going to choose the states to be? Usually that's obvious, but it won't always be the case. Now, there needs to be enough independent states to capture the entire system dynamics. For low order systems, the selection of the states is usually obvious. However, if you're given a high order system, such as a high order differential equation, you might not have direct access or information on what the best choice of states should be. And in this case, you might need to use an arbitrary definition, but that's slightly beyond what we want to cover here. For the examples we're going to look at, you'll find the state definition is largely obvious. We'll start with an easy example then, a mass spring damper. You can see the figure here, and what we're going to use is the classic modelling approach, which is force balance. So we separate the force, the applied force F, into three components, F3, F2 and F1, where F3 accelerates the mass, F2 extends the spring, and F1 deals with any frictional components or damping. If you write down equations for F1, F2 and F3, you'll see that F1 is given by b hat times the velocity, F2 is given by the spring constant times the extension, or x, and F3 is mass times acceleration, or m dv dt. And our basic modelling says that F equals F1 plus F2 plus F3. So I can put all those equations together, and I end up with my nominal model for a mass spring damper which is this one here. The force is mass times dv dt plus b hat times v plus k times x. Now the question we're interested in is how do we put this into a state space model? First thing we need to do is define what should the states be. Well here it's fairly obvious that a logical choice for the states is going to be v velocity and x. So, given we've chosen the states as velocity v and displacement x, the next thing to do is say, OK, how do we form a state space model? Now, for a state space model, what we need to do is find the derivatives of each state and then stack them into a single vector. So this is the really important sentence for this whole video. If you're forming a state space model, what do you do? You find the derivatives of each state and then you stack those derivatives into a single vector. And we will illustrate that with an example here. So first, we've identified the states we want to use as velocity and displacement. So we need to stack these into a vector. So our first equation was this one. M dv dt equals f minus kx minus b hat v. So if I write the derivative on its own, there it is, dv dt, you see I get f minus kx minus b hat v over m. Now the next derivative could be given by dx dt equals v. So the derivative of displacement is velocity. So I can write that by inspection. So now what I'm going to do is take these two derivatives and just stack them into a vector. And there you can see that's what we've done here. I've written a vector which has stacked those two derivatives. I've put dv dt as the top element, dx dt as the bottom element. I could put them the other way up, it doesn't really matter. And now I need to put on the right hand side 
the equations which match. So if I look at this top equation, what have I got? I've got a minus b hat over m times v, so there it is, minus b hat over m times v, a minus k over m times x, so there it is, and then a plus 1 over m times f. So the top row gives me the top equation. And then for the second equation, I had dx dt equals v. So you see I've got a 1 in the bottom corner of the A matrix. So what I've managed to do is define a matrix A, which multiplies a state vector z, where z is v over x. And I've also managed to define a matrix B, where this matrix B multiplies the input f. So in compact form, what we've said is that I can represent these two equations by a single matrix equation, where the matrix equation is z dot equals az plus bf. And this is called a state space form, because I've got a vector of the states, that z, and then I've used matrices to represent the dependence between the derivatives of the states and the states and the input. Let's look at a second example then, a resistor inductor capacitor in series. So the first thing to do is remind ourselves how we model this, a voltage V1 across R. Um, in fact, I'm not sure which way I've done the Vs here, so let's get the equation up. Yeah, so we've got V2 across L and V3 across the capacitor. And so with your standard electrical modeling using Kirchhoff's laws, we can write V equals V1 plus V2 plus V3, where V1 is R1 dQ dt, Q being the charge, V2 is L di dt, I being the current, and V3 equals Q over C. Now I can combine all those together in a standard form, and here's your standard equation for a resistor inductor capacitor circuit. Voltage equals inductance L times di dt plus resistance R times dQ dt plus 1 over C times Q. And what we want to do now is say, can I put this into state space form? The obvious choice of the states are going to be I and Q. So what we need to do is write the derivatives of I and the derivative of Q and stack these in a vector. That's how we form the state space model. We find the derivatives and stack the derivatives in a vector. So that's what I've done here. You can see that the derivative of I, di dt, is given by voltage minus Q over C minus I times R divided by L. And the derivative of I, that's back to front, that should say dQ dt equals I. Let's get it the right way around. You'll see it's put the right way around here. And so now I can put this into state space form by writing the derivatives of I and Q and stacking them in a vector. So here you'll see is the stacked vector. I've got di dt on top, dq dt underneath. And so the top row of the right hand side gives me di dt and the bottom row gives me dq dt. So you'll notice I've got minus R over L <coughs> times I minus 1 over LC times Q equals 1 over L times V is the top row and dq dt equals I on the bottom row. And essentially therefore I've defined a matrix A which multiplies on a state vector I and Q plus a matrix B which multiplies on the voltage. And so in compact form, I've now got an equation z dot equals az plus bv. So the derivatives of the states, or a vector of the derivatives of the states, equals some matrix A times the vector of the states, plus some matrix B times the input. What about a DC servo then? Now, in this case, it might be less obvious which states to choose, because you've got a number of things that change, angles, velocities, current, back EMF, torque, and so the definition might be to some extent arbitrary, but I'm going to write down the two equations we can use to model a simple DC servo. I've got voltage is inductance times the rate of change of current with time, plus some constant times the angular velocity of the load, plus current times resistance. And I've also got a mechanical equation, some constant times the current is some constant B times the angular velocity of the load 
plus the inertia times the rate of change of angular velocity of the load. And I probably should call that B hat so I don't get confused with other Bs later. Now the states of interest must be defined with an equation including their derivatives. And if I go back here and look, you'll notice I've already got di dt in this equation and d omega dt in this equation. So a logical choice of states is probably going to be here, i and omega l. So that's what I've done. I've chosen those two as my states. But other possibilities are there. So there's my two equations. So what I've got to do first is rearrange those two equations so that the derivatives are on their own. So you'll see here di dt is given by this equation. The omega L dt is given by this equation, and we should put the hat on the B again to make sure we don't get mixed up. And then, to form the state-space model, what do I do? I take each of the state derivatives and stack them into a vector. So here we go. You see there's a vector with d omega L dt here and di dt here. And the top row is going to be this equation for d omega L dt. And the second row is going to be this equation for di dt. And you'll see, what does that give you? It gives you your standard state space form, which is z dot equals az plus bv, where a is the matrix given down here. v is the vector of my states. And b is the matrix given here. What about a DC servo with displacement? Now, should you be interested not in the angular position as well as the angular velocity, you're going to need another state. So what I've done here is I've introduced one extra equation, which shows me the relationship between the angular position and the other states. So you'll see angular position theta L is the derivative of, sorry, the derivative of angular position is angular velocity. So I've now got three states or three derivatives. So I can use an analogous um, definition to the previous slide. I'm not going to do this in detail, but you'll see now my state of vectors, there are three derivatives, d omega l dt, di dt, and d theta l dt. So I need a third row to define this third derivative. And there it is. There's the third row for the third derivative. But I've still got my form z dot equals az plus bu. The only difference being that now I've got three states in my state vector. And so the matrix A is 3 by 3, and the matrix B is 3 by 1. What about a pendulum? So a pendulum of length L with end mass m is able to swing freely, and we're going to assume some friction constant k. Now, a model can be derived using force balance in the tangential direction, assuming small angles. And I'm not going to go through the derivation of this. I'm just going to give you the equation. So there's a typical equation. ML theta double dot equals minus mg theta minus kL theta dot. And the challenge here is to say, can I put this model into state space form. First job then is to choose the states. So when we're forming a state space model, we have to define the states before we move on. So here, I'm going to choose states theta, which is angular position, and theta dot, which is angular velocity. So that's my choice. You can make other choices if you want. Having done that, my job is to say, what are the derivatives of each of the states? Well, the derivative of angular position is easy, is angular velocity. So I can just write that one, d theta dt equals omega. And you'll notice from the original differential equation, if I go back here, that I've got a theta double dot in here, which is clearly equivalent to an omega dot. So all I'm going to do there is put that in the equation here. You see I've got ml d omega dt equals minus mg theta minus kl omega. So we now do our normal rule. We take the derivatives of the states and stack them in a vector. So there we go. I've got d omega dt and d theta dt, which are stacked in a vector. And then I simply, on the right-hand side, 
put the same equations but in matrix form so it all matches. So you'll see I've got a KL, t KL term here, so I've got this minus KL over ML times omega minus MGL over ML times theta plus naught times F and that gives me the top equation. For the second equation, this one here, d theta dt equals omega, I have a 1 here and a 0 here and a 0 here. There's no F in this particular equation and so you'll see again by defining my state vector as z equals omega and theta, I can come up with a matrix A and a matrix B and so I've now got an equation of the form z dot equals az plus bv so I've got the derivative of the states is some matrix A times the states plus some matrix B times the input. So in summary, we've illustrated some state space model derivations for several common second order systems. It's noted that the selection of the states is important but this choice is often obvious from the underlying component and balance equations as only certain states will already have the derivatives defined explicitly. The compact form has vectors of states and inputs and matrices of coefficients. So we go from having a sort of mess of different coefficients and numbers and maybe three or four equations to having a single matrix equation which takes this form and the advantage is that now we've only got one simple form to carry around so if we know how to analyze this form it's a lot lot easier 